All right, today I'm working on Google Apps Script and I'm gonna kind of do a whole little mini project start to finish. So uh, sometimes you have a Google Drive folder that you want people to drop stuff into. So I used to, or I'm using a, a tool right now where people are just dropping files into that so we can collect a bunch of stuff and then repackage it and send it back out. But I'm collecting it from different people. I don't wanna have to manually go in and check that folder every time to see if anybody's added anything. So I'm gonna make a little demo project here, and this is a standalone script. It's not attached to a spreadsheet or anything, but we're gonna use Drive App today and um, an outside library called Object Store, uh, written by Adam Morris. And that's going to allow us to define an array of folders that we're gonna watch for updates. And you can set this to run on a trigger for every day or every hour, or however frequently you wanna run it. But there's kind of four things. So we're gonna take an array of objects. Each object is gonna have a type. So we can get the correct um, class getter out of app script and to give it a name for just um, readability and then a folder id and that folder id is going to let us get stuff uh, we're going to store some properties and using the property service and we're going to abstract that out using this object store library so i'll come back to that uh, then we need to compare the number of current files in that folder so we're going to open it up and see how many files are in there and then how many were stored in our properties. So when it runs, it's got something to check against. And then I'll show you how to send an email to yourself using Google Apps Script uh, in the editor. So uh, again, as always, if you just wanna see the completed code, you can um, get that from the description. I've got it saved there. Now, remember like all of this stuff is kinda, it's just fun, it just works. It's not something that's really robust, and if it breaks, I'm not really gonna dive into problems, but it's all just through your account, you're not sharing access with anybody. Uh, so let's define a couple functions. So let's do, call this main. Um, we want a, a function to check the type of things. So this helps you extend out if you're watching a file, maybe like a spreadsheet, and you wanna see if there's new rows added. So we're gonna do um, function uh, check, uh, what do I want to say? I'm going to call this check resource, or actually let's call it get resource. And we'll send it a resource object. So we'll come back to that in a minute. And this is the way I typically code is I'll kind of pseudo code out, get, make my function bodies, and then I'll build them as I need to go. Um, we're going to do a function called register. We'll pass this a resource and what this is going to do is that's going to store or it's going to create a new property for an object so if we create a resource in that original array that doesn't exist yet we can use this function to kind of just churn out what we need um, and then the last one we're going to set a const for our folders to watch and that's going to be an array of objects so we've got one there and remember using the type, the name, and a folder ID. So I do my type is going to be a folder. The name, this could be the project name, would be the folder name. This, so I'm just gonna call this demo one. And then the folder ID, we'll use that as a unique identifier. So I've got a folder set up in Google Drive. So let's go into this tracked folder. And I'm just gonna grab that ID real quick. And I'll paste that in there. And so to add more, if you had other things, remember this is utility, you just comma and add more objects on and on and on as you need to. Uh, so we'll just do the one for now. Okay, so I've got my array. Um, let's set up a, let's, let's jump down to main. Um, so we're going to define a couple variables. Now when we're doing this, we need to, um, uh, let's use let file and we'll come back to that because we're going to loop through this folder using drive app and we need to have um, like a file uh, identifier we'll come back to that in a little bit um, so what we're going to do is for main so we're going to set up a loop and i'm going to use a for in loop we'll call this for resource and folders to watch so what that will do is it will define a scoped variable just to this loop called resource, and that will be each object. So resource will have a type property, a name property, and an ID. Um, so let's call, let's set up a folder now. Let's 
let's define another variable so let folder so we can just say folder equals and now we're going to call this get resource actually instead of folder let's call it um let's refactor a little bit for item and folders to watch we'll call this resource let's be generic with it in case we had files at some point resource equals get resource and we'll give it the item so now in get resource we need to check a couple things so we want to check the type so we're going to use the type key the type property here and we'll access it and return that thing um, using drive app so to get the resource uh, we're going to just uh, i'm going to use a switch statement here um, and so the case would be uh, and I want the resource type. So if the case is folder, we're going to return drive app. So drive app gives you access to drive things and we're going to get folder by ID and we'll call resource ID. So remember this resource has got a folder ID right here. Um, and so what I can do is if my type is a folder, I can call the appropriate method using drive app so we're going to get the folder by ID and return the actual folder object. And we can use that folder object then to loop through and get the files inside that folder. Um, and so let's throw one more case in here. So it's case file. So if I were to add an object um, and we do like a type file in here, then we would return uh, a different. So we're going to return drive app get file by ID and then we still pass it the resource ID because that file would have its own ID. So this is a little bit of manual work for each, but because it's your own thing, um, you can just add them as you need them. Uh, the other way to do this would just be to have a spreadsheet of all of these. So you'd have a spreadsheet with the folder name and then the ID and you could build out a, essentially a database that it just checks. Uh, but for standalone like this one, I'm just gonna do it here. All right, so down here in my main function, we've got, um, resource as the item. Now this is a folder. So I want to iterate. Now I'm going to actually, this is going to get bigger. So I'm going to jump this up here. So it's a little bit easier to see on the screen. Okay. Um, so resource get item. Now we've got the folder. So we need to do a couple checks. So first of all, I want to get my stored property. I want to get however many files have existed in that thing. So we need to get this library. Now, this is a library written by a guy named Adam Morris. Um, and he is a Google developer expert and he's got all kinds of great stuff here. So I'm gonna get my ID. But what this does is it's um, an abstraction. It, it gives me a way to access objects either locally in memory using a map, which is like super fast, or it lets you just put stuff in the cache or the property service. I'm gonna use that to abstract out a little bit because it takes care of permissions and it makes things, I can just define one variable. Uh, because I wanna use that, we're gonna do const store equals, um, actually we gotta add the library first and then we can get some autocomplete. So I'm gonna paste the script ID in, we'll look it up. There we go. Let's get the most current version and you can call it what you want. I'll just keep it as object store. Let's do object store. And then in the documentation, we want document user. We're gonna store in the script property because there's no document attached to it. And I don't really care across my user because it's only this script accessing it. And we're gonna persist key on the next execution. I'm going to manually persist because um, it gives me a little bit more control over when I store that data. So we're going to pass that manual true. So what I'm looking at is we're going to do our manual store. We're going to create one and we'll use that manual true key. So object store dot create. It's a script based prop um, and we need an object. I think it was just manual. There we go. Manual true. Okay. So now I've got a global store object. And what I can do for the resource, get the resource. 
uh, because we're in the loop, I want to check to see if there's a store first. So let's do let stored equals um, store. And in this library, there's a get method. And all I want to do is store data based on the key, the folder key, because those are unique already. So I can do store get. Um, and what this is going to do here, let's come up and make some notes. So we're going to store the count of files in a folder by um, folder key. So this would be one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D is my key. And then the count would be zero. That's an example of what we're going to store. So I want to get the resource ID. So remember, we're looking at this resource is my thing. Actually, instead of resource ID, let's do item ID because that's my object. That's what I'm taking um, here. I want to store by that key. You could do it by resource ID, but then you'd have to access with the files. Um, so we're just going to do it this way with my predefined object. Um, so let stored is stored get. So if, if stored doesn't exist, It'll return undefined if it doesn't exist. Let's do, we're going to register. So this is my function here. It's undefined right now. So we're going to register the item and let's pass it the item ID. And it will return. I don't want to do this. So what I'm going to do, so I know I want to return store git um, eventually want to get that. So we need to store set resource ID and we're just going to set it to zero. Okay. resource file and we're also going to stored up here. Okay, this is kind of the danger of coding live. So what we're doing is um, I've again defined a variable already up here. So let stored, we're going to set stored right now to um, get item ID. So if it exists, it's going to give me a, a count. So let's just do stored count. Let's rename this. Um, I'm going to rename the symbol. Actually, okay. So if you've not used the new editor, so we're going to rename this symbol from stored to stored count. So it's a little bit more and it, boom, updates everything, which is great. So my stored count is going to be stored get in the item ID. If that doesn't exist in my properties or in my cache or in a local map, it's going to return undefined. Okay, so if it's undefined, here we go. If stored count is undefined, I want to set stored count to register this thing. So in register, I'm going to pass it the ID. And we're going to rename that ID because that's all I'm sending it. I don't need the whole resource to go. I just need the ID to go. So we're going to set an ID and we're going to give it a count of zero. You could also be more explicit with your object because it's just a count right now. I don't really care. And then I'm going to return store get the resource ID. Uh, before that, though, because we're in manual mode up here, we need to store it up persist. So we'll save it there and then we'll return this resource ID. Great. So now stored count is set to um, that that count. So it should be zero because I've set it to zero. Now, if stored count already exi exists, that's just going to be some number, whatever number is in there. Okay, so for the item, we've got the resource. Remember, that's a direct reference here. So we've got a folder. I have checked my stored count. Uh, if it doesn't exist, we're going to register that thing. We'll save it and then we'll return it. And I don't want resource ID, I just want ID. And now, still in the loop, we actually need to check. So in Google Apps Script using the file iterator, 
when you access a folder, uh, I'm gonna say resource, get files. Now the autocomplete's not gonna work here because I'm returning a reference to that thing. It doesn't know what, what I'm returning. So I've used the documentation a ton of times to get this, but when you do get files, we're gonna do let file, actually I think I've already defined files. Let's do files and file. All right, I'll talk, I'll explain that in a sec. So we're going to do files equals um, resource get files. This is gonna give me a file iterator and then Google Apps Script, um, I'll show you. So if you just search drive app file iterator, it's essentially, it, it's, an iterat it's an iterable that handles moving through that folder Uh, so this file iterator, we're gonna pretty much take this structure and we're gonna um, update the count of files. I don't really care what they're called or anything. I just wanna know if there's new stuff in there. So back here, so files is my iterable. And in the documentation, you use a while loop because files has next will return true as long as there's another file in the folder as it iterates. If there's not, it returns false and your loop will exit. So while files has next, uh, we need to call files.next to iterate. We need to tell it to move to the next one. Um, and all I wanna do is count plus plus. I haven't defined count yet, so Back here at the top, let's do, or no, yes, no, that is what I want. Let count equal zero. So we're gonna start a new count and we'll compare it against our stored count. So while files has next, upgrade or update the count from zero to whatever, an iterable. So now that we've got count set, and we actually don't need this file identifier anymore. And now here's where we finally get to the check. So we're still inside of this for loop. So if count does not equal stored count, let's do console log and we'll, we'll run a quick test. And let's throw some console logs in here so we can see what it's doing. So right now, this first time I run it, because uh, nothing has been registered, this should come back, this first console log should be undefined. And then when we log it again, after we register it, it should be a zero, should give me a zero. So then we check our files, files has next, count. And if count does not equal stored count, so if our actual count is greater than or less than even the stored count, there's new files added. Um, and let's just throw an else in here. We can console log, nothing has changed. Okay, now remember main is kind of orchestrating everything. So I'm not gonna run register. I'm going to run my main function. On a Mac, command R, on Windows you can do control R and that'll run your function. But essentially it needs to be able to read your Google Drive. Yep, okay, so start, um, get files undefined. All right, so we do have an error, but we started, the starting count is undefined, that's what we thought. Or no, that's not right, starting, oh, not item in, item of. So that's why it was undefined, because, um, I looped it wrong. So let's try that again. Okay, here we go. So start, that's, uh, so now we're looking at line 19. Starting demo one, which is the name of my folder, so that was right. I have stored as null because there's been nothing stored. Um, it was undefined, or it's, so it's not undefined, it's null, I was wrong on that. But then when we store it, now console log stored again, and it's set to zero. 
we run through console log there are, are new files that that did not happen because nothing has changed our count is equal to our stored now if i run it again the stored null should go away we'll see stored zero twice let me run this there we go so stored is zero stored is zero nothing has changed so now what we need to do is handle this new files are added because um, if I don't update my cache, if I don't update my object store, then it'll send you an email every time. It's not gonna actually update. So we're gonna do a couple things. So if count does not equal store, this is triggering whatever changes. There's new files added. Um, I want to do store set the uh, item, item ID, and we wanna add, change it to count. So we're gonna take my thing, the ID of this resource we're currently using, and we're gonna set it to this new count variable. And that will update the, the, the store for this execution, but then I wanna do store persist. And that will write it to memory for a long-term long -term memory. Um, okay, so let's go to my Google Drive folder. And I'm going to add a Google Doc. Now, I don't care about the contents of the thing. I just wanna know that something is there. Now let's send an email. Uh, you can use mail app, and this is like a simplified um, mailer that runs from your account but doesn't have access to Gmail. So we're gonna do mail app, send email, and it takes an object and everything pops up here. Um, so you can see we need an object with a two subject and a body. And you can use an HTML body and have some fancy stuff. Um, I'll, I'll use HTML body and I'll inline some variables. So this is going to be to brian.bennett at gmail.com and my subject, and we'll use a template string here. So new resource added to, and this is why I put that name property in there, item.name, so that when you get that email, it's, it's not just a new resource is added and you have to figure out where you're going. Um, and then the HTML body, because this is also dynamic, we can, um, a file was added to um, your watched folder. And then we can actually get the link. So because I have a folder resource here, my resource is a folder object back in my getter. Uh, down here at the bottom, I returned the folder itself. I can actually send the, uh, um, the folder, so I can do uh, resource get URL, and that will send me a link directly to that folder. So I'm going to add one more folder or one more file, real quick. So if I come back to my file watcher. Now it is going to ask me for permissions one more time because I've added mail app that needs some extra access. Okay, so we've authorized the script. It'll run. Again, I got to clean up those. There's new files added. Um, so it should have sent an email. Here we go. Here's the email, a file was added to your watched folder with a link and hey, I've got a now preview here and I can jump right to that folder. So again, a little utility script. It's helpful for me, hopefully it's helpful for you. Um, obviously I'll clean up the console logs and everything out, but if you wanna get the copy of the script, it's in the link below. You can copy and paste it and do what you want with it, edit it, add to it. I'd be curious to hear how you extend it and see if you do something else with it. You can leave a comment or shoot me an email. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope this was enjoyable. I don't know if they are or not, but it's kind of helpful for me to kind of talk through these processes. Um, if there's stuff you want to learn more about, let me know in the comments, and I'd be happy to kind of work that into some of the stuff I want to talk about coming up. Thanks.